There's a jewel nestled in the northeast corner of Missouri. A jewel as valuable to residents there as any found in the rest of the world. Scotland County Hospital was a labor of love to those who conceived and built it and continues to be a vital part of the community today nearly 50 years later. Some of the earliest newspaper reports of a possible nursing home and hospital in Scotland County are documented back to 1965. With a steering committee formed and an army of volunteer citizens to move this dream forward, the committee determined a nursing home and a hospital would fulfill a desperate need in the area. On August 30th, 1966, Scotland County voters approved a special bond issue to help construct a 30-bed hospital facility and a 47-bed adjacent nursing home. Ted Gundy, a lifelong Memphis resident and World War II sniper, recalls his role on the steering committee. He was one of the early volunteers that helped collect signatures on a petition to establish the hospital and nursing home. Well, uh, first I was commander of the FW in 1956, and I don't know why I got interested in it, because everybody had to either go to Kirksville or Bloomfield or Tumwell. And I thought, well, maybe if we had a hospital here, people would would come and use it, you know. At that time, I couldn't get anybody really interested in, you know. So later on, uh, they was gonna build a nursing home here. And uh, I talked to Hewitt and Royer, and they said, well, what it's gonna cost, we can build a hospital and a nursing home. So then we got a bunch of people interested in it. And how I got elected to be a steering committee, or the head of the steering committee, why, well, we had to get so many signatures on the ballots, and I think you had it in the picture there, 14 or 1,800 signatures. Holly Boyer served on the hospital board for 42 years. He recalls the personal need that his family had for a nursing home as his mother advanced in years. My mother had had a stroke, and we took her up to uh, Kirksville to the hospital, and and uh, they kept her just about another day and called and told us that there wasn't no, nothing they could do for her. So anyway, there was a lady up in Memphis that would, had been starting a small nursing home. It was an old, big old house, and she was fixing, had a lot of beds and all in right there, and, had, and of course had fans and all. Well, this was in July, and man, was it hot. It didn't happen, she over about two or three weeks, and she passed away. So I thought, there's gotta be something better than this. So I just started to talk to customers and friends and all, and the, First thing you know, we had 25, 30 people. And then that grew, and grew and grew and grew. Missouri legislation at that time would not allow a nursing home to be built that had an adjoining wall to a hospital. Holly, Ted, and many local citizens lobbied legislators in Jefferson City to change the laws to allow this type of construction. At that time, Scotland County Memorial Hospital, directly connected to Scotland County Nursing Home, was a one-of-a-kind facility in Missouri. Dorothy Childress, a proponent of the project, submitted an article to the Memphis Democrat dated Thursday, September 1st, 1966, just days after the bond issue passed. It read, The hospital and nursing home project has proven to all of us that we are realizing our needs, not only for medical facilities, but for progress. We realize these needs can only be met by our willingness to try and to work for them. We know the task will not be easy. Many communities have or are in the process of trying to build hospitals and nursing homes. But to our knowledge, Scotland County is the first in the state to attempt to vote bonds for a hospital and a nursing home combination. It can be done and we are pioneering this effort. The eyes of 113 counties in Missouri are upon us. The next time someone asks, where are you from? We can proudly say, I'm from Scotland County. Childress later writes in June of 1968 
that an additional bond issue will be on the Tuesday, September 17th ballot in order to have the additional local funding necessary to receive the federal government's Hill-Harris monies. And pledges of cash were still needed from all Scotland County residents. All these deadlines were met and construction began. E. Richard Weber, a senior federal judge, was just out of law school and practicing law back in his hometown. Um, I received my law license on September 2nd, 1967. Uh, was appointed prosecuting attorney of Schuyler County. Because there was no prosecutor there at the time. And uh, within the month of September of 1967, and was uh, very active trying to establish a, a law practice in that area. There had uh, already been uh, some work done, some legal work done by Bostick Smoot uh, to uh, get the organization structure put in place, but Bostick had suffered a stroke uh, while he was at the uh, American Bar Association meeting in, uh, in Canada. And uh, some individuals that were uh, uh, already on the board of directors, uh, as I recall, that that part had been accomplished. Um, contacted me uh, to see if uh, I would be interested in representing the uh, boards, both the uh, Scotland County Hospital Board and the Nursing Home Board. Um, um, so I was contacted and, of course, was eager to establish a law practice and it was a, a very good opportunity for me uh, to uh, be uh, associated with the effort because at that time uh, there, was, there were no buildings, it was just a bare lot. Um, we uh, had a lot of meetings, uh, not monthly meetings, sometimes several meetings during the week because there was a lot going on. Um, we had to make uh, plans for, uh, to, to work out details with uh, the architects, uh, with the builder, uh, and uh, really get ready to, uh, to, to establish the facility on that real estate. And uh, also, uh, there were a lot of issues uh, on, um, building uh, exactly what it was that we needed, could afford, and so forth. One of the interesting ones uh, at the time, uh, the hospital and nursing home could not be connected. Uh, there had to be some amount of separation between the two. It was prohibited by the rules for that to happen. and. Uh, we uh, did a lot of uh, lobbying and it was the only one in the state that had a connection so that you could actually walk through a door and get from one uh, facility to the, to the other. The Scotland County Nursing Home opened its doors on July 6, 1970, while the Scotland County Memorial Hospital opened its doors just two weeks later at 8 a.m. on Monday, July 20th. The very next day, the first baby arrived at 9.42 a.m., a little girl, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Kent DeVolt. Holly talks about the very beginning, when they opened the doors. When it started, it was pretty slim. I mean, we, we didn't have no, really, no experience. Never did I dream that we'd have anything like this. And it was just because uh, a lot of it, you were in the right place at the right time. The citizens of Scotland County may have been determined to get these facilities built, but recruiting doctors to work at the hospital in Memphis has never been easy. In fact, when Marcia Dial assumed the role of CEO in the late 80s, she said, the medical staff consisted of two very well-liked family practice doctors that worked too many hours to have much of a personal life. Judge Weber recalled some of the recruiting efforts throughout the years. Uh, there were a lot of issues with personnel. <laughs> Um, it was a lot harder then because uh, doctors, uh, some were willing to come, but their spouses were unwilling to come. I, I, I sense from what I read in the paper and from what I know from friends all the time that recruiting is a lot easier than it was then. It was a continual problem trying to make sure that the hospital was properly staffed. Um, uh, 
this, a lot of the real strength in staffing came from local individuals, uh, nurses in particular who trained and came back and served so faithfully there. Uh. As physicians and qualified staff were recruited, a reputation was built and citizens from around the area trusted their health care to the staff at Scotland County Hospital. Numerous construction projects took place over the years and the medical campus on the corners of Sigler Avenue and Watkins Street in Memphis grew. Today, Scotland County Hospital is a district hospital designated by the federal government as a 25-bed critical access hospital. The essential and primary health care needs of citizens are being met with new and renovated facilities that are equipped to last well into the future. All of this thanks to our forefathers who had the insight, courage, and fortitude to pave this path to benefit our communities. But it is something that I knew we needed better than what we had. And definitely, that's happened now. Yeah, it, it, it was just certainly a blessing to the whole area.